So could you tell me, how big a problem would you say rodents would be in this country currently? Well, the biggest problem we have is we actually don't know. Uh, rats are nocturnal creatures, uh, so they like to come out when it's all nice and quiet. And that makes it very difficult to actually count the populations. What we are finding, though, is we're having an increased number of call-outs to actually deal with rodent infestations. Um, people just aren't accepting them anymore. Uh, the disease factor is actually getting across for rats. Uh, and that's what we're gauging our, our, our industry responses from, is that we're just getting more call-outs for them. Well, there's no doubt on most farms rats will be present because uh, unavoidably rats offer the sort of harbourage food uh, and general cover that rats, rats enjoy and at this time of year they'll be moving off the fields uh, as the weather deteriorates and uh, so it's inevitable that rats will be present to some level. There's, there's certainly evidence to say that the rat population is increasing. More and more work does keep coming through regarding the, uh, the actual control of rodents on a, on a job basis, which is how we would describe it, to be called out to an active infestation to control them. The difficulty that you have on farmland uh, is obviously there's lots of open space, uh, which makes control very difficult. There's also lots of food availability as well, uh, and rats will always go for a naturally occurring product over uh, rodenticide. So it makes it very difficult from a, a professional control aspect of making sure that we get the rodenticides in the right place, uh, intercept the rats before they get into the, the natural foods, uh, and, and work that way. So it, it's an increasingly difficult task that we have. Well, first of all, the uh, housekeeping is very, very important. The reduction of cover in and around the farm to prevent harbourage so that the rats can't actually start living and breeding on the farm. Uh, availability of food is obviously another thing. The, uh, the amount of food that would be available to the rodents is going to be directly proportional to the, uh, to the le level or the size of the population. So uh, keeping food controlled, good housekeeping, uh, reduction of cover around the farm are all very, very important with the, um, when, you, when you're viewing press control from a preventative point of view. Uh, a lot of agricultural buildings will have gaps. Uh, Rats really need four things, well all creatures need four things for survival. Something to eat, something to drink, somewhere to live uh, and favourable temperatures. Now there's not much we can do about the temperature, it's, it's becoming uh, milder. We don't get the cold winters that we used to have. Uh, in terms of food, well, food's available everywhere. Rats don't need that much to eat in a day uh, and so the, the food source is on site. So really that leaves the water and somewhere to live and, and farm buildings, outbuildings provide exactly the environment that they're after. One of the things that people talk about a lot in terms of the, the rat population is resistance to current baits. How have you seen that develop over the years? Yeah, there's a factor. I've worked in the, uh, one of the main areas in Hampshire, Berkshire, where we have significant resistance problems to a whole range of uh, materials currently available to us. But the situation elsewhere in the country is often a little vague, is not, is not that clear cut, and we need to, uh, that needs to be addressed. But it also needs to be one of the factors that pest controllers, farmers, anyone taking into a, need to take into account when they're carrying out rat control. There are certain parts of the country um, where resistance is most definitely a problem. Um, a lot of times we are coming off suspected resistance which sometimes relates purely to bad pest control. Not enough baits being put down or the baits been put down in the wrong area and not enough of it has been eaten. And so sometimes it's difficult to say whether it is a genuine resistance problem or just bad technique. Another issue that seems to be coming to the fore is accidental poisoning of, of, of wildlife. Uh, how big an issue would you say that would be? Poisoning of wildlife is a, uh, obviously a, a factor that we need to control. Um, in terms of, of rodenticide use, it's about the placement to it, it's, it's about um, collecting carcasses, it's about the quantity. Again, this is where we start to talk about the resistance aspects. More and more poison being used means that more and more poison potentially could um, get into the wildlife. And, and that's what we have to prevent. So yes, it's, it's a big thing that we need to, to curb and, and stop. It's certainly still an issue in the UK. It's difficult to know if uh, the number of incidents going up or down because there's no really reliable figures but it certainly still is a problem and birds of prey like red kites and buzzards are dying every year in the UK because of this. Uh, I think it's fair to say in other parts of Europe it's even more of a problem. Uh, on continental Europe uh, secondary poisoning from rodenticides is the number one problem and the number one reason why red kites are declining in France and Germany and Spain.
Kuma Tetra has been used successfully uh, in the UK and on the continent for, for, for decades now. Um, the the biggest advantage is kind of things like secondary poisoning. So you know, if if a, a rat eats the bait and a predator, a natural predator eats that rat, that you, you get the secondary poisoning is vastly reduced because of the nature of the product. Um, the other th the other thing about the uh, active ingredient is um, you know, people group it because it's a first what they call a first generation rodenticide. People group it thinking all first generations have. Um, are all the same, and in, in Kuma Tetra it's not actually the same. It has the the benefits of being uh, lower uh, toxicity f with regards to secondary poisoning, but also has the benefits of its potency of being as potent as, as, a, as a lot of the second generations, things like Bridifacum, with the added, added benefit that you can actually use Kuma Tetra outside as well as indoors. The basic message really is that prevention is better than cure. I mean. If we wanted to get rid of rats, you could always use a more toxic, newer substance. But that's never going to be the whole answer. Simply chucking out larger quantities of ever more toxic substances is only going to disproportionately increase the risk of secondary poisoning to birds of prey. And of course, we're only going to get more and more resistance developing. So we're going to end up in a toxic arms race that really we can never win. The answer has got to be a more sustainable approach to the problem emphasising that uh, prevention is always better than cure. If you can work out why there is a rat problem in the first place and remove the source, that's all the much better. And then, even if that there is still a rat infestation, using uh, either trapping or alternative methods or less toxic older rodenticides that have less of a problem for birds of prey. The most important thing that you can do is put down something which is more attractive than the food they're already used to. So if they've got a large pile of grain stored in a shed, you need to give them something which is going to take them off what they're used to eating and comfortable eating and give them something which they're going to eat instead, which is the bait. So as much as the active, it's also the formulation. Uh, the, the active within, within Rat CP that we've just launched, uh, as well as being a, a palatable formulation, has the, the added advantage of, of reducing the secondary poisoning. So, so hopefully it offers uh, offers a a win win really and in terms of actual baiting <coughs> and what farmers can do you know what sort of areas should they be looking to to put traps to put bait down in right this is very important that uh, you shouldn't just go uh, blanket putting down bait and traps because that will not be an effective way of doing it you really do have to look at the signs around the farm and put the bait to as close to or actually in the harbourage if you can possibly find it, in which case you get a much quicker uptake of bait and therefore a much quicker control of the problem. And what sort of signs of rats should farmers be looking for? Well there are obviously the runs, they're, uh, they are creatures of habit and they tend to use the same run to a food source from their harbourage or to a, uh, to a water source from their harbourage and this tends to trample the vegetation down in those areas so there usually are quite clear runs where the vegetation has been flattened down. If you can find those and put a bait on, the, on that run then there's usually a much quicker way of, um, of picking it up. And then of course the other things are things like droppings and gnawing marks as well. The uh, rodents inside the teeth grow continuously to keep them worn down. They will chew away at uh, uh, pieces of wood, door frames and things like that and so the teeth mark are very very evident usually. There is increasing pressure being put on the industry because of the traces of anticoagulant that are being found in, 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 the, in the animals. Uh, so anything that, that puts increasing pressure both on individual farms because there are also prosecutions now coming out from, from either deliberate or accidental poisoning um, or pressure on the actual actives themselves. Uh, there's an awful lot of arguments now for, for not increasing the amount of anticoagulants or poisons that are available to the market but actually reducing them. And that, that that's bad news. Uh, so anything that can lower the imprint uh, into the environment while still, still killing rats has to be good. Uh, the other thing is an awful lot, if there is a, a, a dead owl or a, a dead kite found on farm, increasingly tests are being done to find out where it's come from and who's caused it. By using something like rat CP with Kuma Tetraal in, one, it's far less likely to happen in the first place, but secondly, if you can show that you're using it on your farm, it's unlikely to be traced back to you as the source of the infestation. By and large, these are bromodialone, difenicum, bradyficum that is turning up in the, in the residues. If some of these control measures aren't carried out properly and um, the, the, the problem, the rodent problem, it just increases as it is currently, uh, 
What's the doomsday situation? What can you see in, in say, 10, 15 years' time in terms of the rodent population? Well, uh, in, in terms of population size, rats reproduce every six weeks, averagely, uh, with the right conditions. Um, so the prospect is, is not good if we don't control the rats. But turn that the other way, if we go back 10, go back 10 years, the infestations weren't as bad as they, they are now. Uh, a lot of rural situations had more of a problem. We're actually finding urban situations have got a problem now. So, uh, yeah, looking forward 10, 15 years, if we don't sort out the, the rat infestations, we will literally be inundated with rats everywhere uh, and also with products potentially that won't work. So now is the time to, to really go back to basics, understand how rats work, understand the products that are available to control rats and bring the numbers right down. There's a number of sources. Firstly, they can, they can go and ask their professional pest controller. Uh, they, they can log on site for, for more information about the product as well, which is uh, ratcp.co.uk, which also has uh, some, some more detailed information about the profile of the product. Alternatively, it's available from uh, three master distributors, Bowden and Knights, uh, Trilanco and uh, Shelton Technologies, all, all of which uh, their, their details are uh, available at ratcp.co.uk.